my name is Nicole. Welcome to The Pine Cottage. Today we are going to do a traditional podcast episode mid-November, which I don't usually do, but I'm changing things up around here. So if you follow me on Instagram, you will know that I've been sick. I am sick. I have a head cold. But I am a firm believer that if you get your mind in the game, your body will follow suit. So I am here, no matter how I'm here, to bring you a podcast episode today because I want to. And it's just going to be a cozy one because I am congested and I'm coughing and I'm sneezing. So I'm going to try not to do any of those unsightly things here on camera. But I do have my tea with me today because my throat is raw and um, I just want to be cozy. Oh, that's hot, but good. So here I am today, full transparency. Cozy pants, cozy sweatshirt, cozy socks. Nothing matches. I mean, it's just cozy. I did put a little bit of makeup on and I brushed my hair, but I just put it back because I said, uh, I don't want to. But I wanted to talk with you and chat with you and share with you. And, you know, the end of the month into December, it's going to be a whole new ball game here on this channel because I'm going to be putting up a video weekly. So I wanted to have like a couple normal podcast episodes because I don't know what December is going to look like. I don't know if they're going to be podcast episodes or more vlog like or a combination of both, which just depends how I feel. So I wanted to bring you a little something. And if you are someone who is like my son and doesn't like to hear people eating or drinking or slurping, <laughs> this might not be the episode for you because I can't promise you that I won't sneeze or cough or blow my nose at some point. But I'm here. I have some things to talk about today. The first of which is... This is going to be tricky, actually, because I put my notes on my phone and now I'm using my phone to record so I can't look at my notes. Okay, first, I'm going to try to remember them in order. Mom, if you're watching this, stop. You cannot watch this episode. You need to wait until after Christmas now to watch my videos because I'll be talking about some things that I don't want you to see. So bye. I love you. First thing I want to talk about is a uh, finished object. I have one and um, I talked to you about this in the last episode. This is an Italian autumn cowl by Francesca of an Italian knitter. And if you don't know who she is, I'm going to link her below. Please introduce yourself to her because she's a beautiful person. And she made a really lovely pattern. This is not the pattern. <laughs> See, my brain's a little foggy. But I utilized her pattern to seam the end of the scarf to make it into a cowl. And one of my whips is actually her pattern. So this is just a garter stitch scarf that I started out of Lion Brand Wool Ease. And I was just going to make a scarf and then possibly some tassels at the end. And then I, I, then I decided to make it into a cow for a gift. So it is complete. And you can see the edge where I seamed. I really like how it turned out. I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to try it on, even though I have a hoodie on. So you can kind of get an idea. So, you know, it's not itchy at all. It's soft. I didn't block it or anything. Um, so this is it. I mean, lovely. I'm going to give it as a gift. So that is that. I'm going to have to take some, some pictures, some finished pictures of it that are a little bit nicer than what I'm looking like now. It's hot. I can't keep it on. I'm sweating. Oh, so I am very pleased with how this turned out and I was so pleased with the ease of just garter stitch over and over and over that I said I want to try Francesca's pattern because it did include some eyelets that made it look a little bit more delicate. This is definitely like 
workhorse cow. Like it's freezing outside and you just need to keep warm. And so I wanted something that looked a little, it's not fancy. It's just a little more feminine, I guess, delicate. So um, I decided to, after I used her pattern to seam this, I said, okay, I want to knit the pattern. It is a free pattern and I'm keeping it in this this bag that I purchased from Blueberry Fields. And it is adorable. And you guys, these leather straps smell so good. Okay, story time. My grandfather, my mom's dad, um, lived on a farm and I was born in the house next door. So I was born basically on his farm. And lived there until I was five, almost six. And that time in my life, that being on the earth and with the horses and in the fields and the air and the just being in the country imprinted on my soul. And I'm meant to be back in the country at some point. We live in the suburbs and all I want is a piece of land. <clears throat> but the smell of these leather straps brings me right back to his to his home, right in his kitchen, because they would have um, boots, leather boots and leather saddles and um, just different things from living on the farm that were made of leather that smell like his house. And it's just such a comforting smell because I've been I smelled it from my first years of life. And so when I got this in the mail, I was like, oh, this smells like home just smells really good. So anyway, long story long, this is an Italian autumn cowl. And I am knitting this in, let me show you that first. This is in Knit Picks Comfy. It's worsted weight. And this is the colorway parchment. And it is 75% cotton and 25% acrylic. And I had bought this yarn. It's from my stash. I bought several skeins of this yarn because I was going to knit my daughter a sweater in it. I was going to knit myself a sweater in it because I'm so sensitive to wool that I thought an acrylic cotton blend would be much softer. And I did knit my Weekender in this yarn. It was in black. And it is very soft. Um, but since then, I have found that superwash wool does not affect me as much as long as I'm not like sweating. I get too warm then it starts to itch but if the weather calls for wearing a sweater it's fine anyway I, I don't think I'm, I decided that I wasn't going to use this for a sweater anymore so I wanted to use it up out of my stash and I thought this would be the perfect thing because it's a cowl and it goes around your neck if I keep it I know it'll be comfortable if I gift it you know you never know if somebody else has a sensitivity to wool so they could wear it and it's easy to maintain and you could just wash it and put it in the washer. Um, so anyway, this is how far I am on this work. So not super far. I have a, quite a ways to go, but I've been knitting on some other things in combination with this. So I would like to give it as a gift for Christmas. Um, so I'm just, this is something that's easy to take with me. It's small. It's fairly simple. I don't have to look at the pattern. Um, it's pretty easy to follow the repeats. I did modify how many stitches to cast on um, because Francesca made hers much wider than this. Um, let me see. It's a free pattern. So <clears throat> I can share with you. Um, she says to cast on 70 stitches and use a US 8 needle. And I did, all I had handy was a US 9. So that's what I'm using. I'm a tight knitter. So I'm like, mm, that's fine. And I only cast on 56 stitches. And you can see it's kind of uneven as far as the eyelets go. Like this first eyelet is here. But then at the end, it's right on the end. But I think when you're wearing it, you're not going to notice. So I really didn't care about that. I just know that I didn't want it super wide because 
I didn't want it to be super bulky here. Although this yarn does have a lot of drape to it. So then I was kind of second guessing myself, like maybe I should have done the 70 because it's so drapey. Maybe it won't just like hug your neck as nicely. So I don't know. We'll see when it's done, how it works out. But so far, so good. So that is my first knit. And it has a nice, um, it's knit, like as you go, you build this I-cord edge, um, which is nice. And I think when I'm finished, when I block it out, those stitches will even up because I have moments where <laughs> they're not so pretty. This side's a little bit prettier than that other side I just showed you. But it makes, makes a neat little edge. So that's that. Let me get it all back in my bag here. Okay, where are you guys are. This eye keeps twitching. If you guys see it twitch, just ignore it. Okay, I'm sorry if the lighting is not great. I have my, my window here for some natural light, but then I turned on this lamp because if, it, if I have it off, this whole side of my face was shaded and I thought some light is better than nothing. And it's, a, it's, one, it's one of those, God, I can't talk. It's one of those daylight bulbs, so... It's not as, the lighting isn't as warm, which should be helpful. So then I don't have like a yellow cast on the video, but my tea's getting cold already. I'll have to do a reheat. Next in my beautiful This Handmade Life bag, which I purchased last year. Um, look at that. It's just, I love it so much. It could be spring. It could be fall. Like, I don't even care. I just, I love it so much. It has leather handles too. Living in here is my Felix pullover that I've been working on. And <laughs> I love the Felix pullover pattern. I have knit this, I want to say many times because I've had to, that's my eye again. <laughs> I've had to start it. I've started it and had to frog it and started it and frog it. Not even just this time, but <clears throat> when I knit it in the past. And if you've been with me any length of time, you know that I knit this for myself and it was too small. And so I'm in the process of frogging that. And at some point I will knit it again, the same size as I'm knitting this one, but I don't have enough yarn for long sleeves. So I'm going to have to modify it into a short sleeve pattern. So this time around, I was fairly confident, like, okay, I've knit this sweater so many times. It should be easy peasy, right? Well, I was tired and probably this cold was starting and I didn't realize it. And I, I should know better than to knit at, in the evening because I just get so sleepy and I just mess up all the time when I do that. This is being knit in Knit Picks City Tweed. This is an Erin White yarn um, in the colorway Blue Blood. And I knit the ribbing for the collar. I did the short row shaping. I was doing the, the raglan increases. And at some point, my stitch marker, one of my stitch markers, where it separates for the raglan increases, slipped off my needle and I didn't realize it. And so I was missing the little eyelets that the Felix is known for on one of the four sections that it calls for. And so it was uneven. I had three sections that were going as normal and one that was just being knit. And then I had one that was kind of like off to the side. It wasn't in that, that arrow chevron pattern. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? Forget this. I'm not, I can't even rip back because I would be all confused about the short row shaping and I, I just tore it all out. I said, this is going to be frogged and I'm just going to start over again. And it was a good like two and a half days work. I had like a couple, some time off from my jobs and I have just been knitting, knitting, knitting like crazy on this because my goal is to get this done for Christmas. And so I said, you know, I'm, if I don't fix it, I can't give it to someone like that. So I ripped it up and restarted. And now it looks beautiful. Let me see which is the front and which is the back here. 
I'm not really sure to be honest. So this is where I am with the Felix. And it looks really good, you guys. I don't know if you can see, it's hard to see with this yarn. My, my eyelets here, but that's where they kind of are. So I am just at the point where I'm gonna gonna be um, splitting for the sleeves and then just you know doing the body round and round and round. And that's gonna be perfect knitting for me, even if it's evening time because it's just stockinette. And I'm hoping that I can get the bulk of this done before the end of the month. And then I have most of December to work on the rest of the things that I want to gift for people. I'm always more ambitious with my plans for gift knitting than the reality of what I'm able to finish, but we'll see what I end up with. I'm, I have several pairs of socks that I still want to knit. Um, I have a couple hats that I would like to knit. Hats I think would go fairly quickly. They're um, DK to worsted weight and I've knit them before in like a weekend, like one hat in a weekend. So I could save those till last and just knock them out at the end, maybe. So that's my plan. This is, if you've never knit the Felix Pullover, this is the Felix Pullover by Amy Christophers or Christophers. I'm not really sure how she says it. And it's a beautiful pattern that I would like to have for myself at some point. So I don't know, maybe after the holidays in the dead of winter, I will do that short sleeved one that I have planned in my other yarn. But I kind of like this color on me. So I might do one just like it. I could be matching with the recipient of this one. <laughs> I want to show you my third whip is going to be gifted with this sweater. And I want to show you why. This yarn is hand dyed yarn by Ashen Bumble. And this is in the colorway Vintage Teacup. And this is a sock. And I'm just doing a plain, plain Jane sock. And this is it here. So there are little flecks of, it's hard to see with this lamp on, but this dark purple maroon garnet color. And it just complements the sweater so nicely. So I want to get that together with the sweater. So I just cast this on last night and I probably could get one sock done. I might just work on it today because when I'm not feeling well, I just want something familiar and easy and socks are that for me. So I might just try to finish this sock today and then, then start working some more on the sweater. I did not hear, I did not hear from the winner of the giveaway in the last video. Um, so I'm going to try to contact her. And if I don't hear from her in, by the end of the month video in two weeks, I'm going to redraw for the Knitovation Stitch, Stitch Dictionary um, because I haven't heard from her and I really would like somebody to have it. I have an extra one here. If I don't hear from her in the next couple weeks, then I'm going to redraw in the next video at the end of November. So if you still haven't purchased your copy and you would like to be in the running, stay tuned. I had some questions and they're on my phone. I'm just gonna pop them up on the screen and then I will try to do a voiceover um, when I'm editing. So first question, So I love when you guys find me by watching one of my earlier videos because, I don't know, I've been doing this for a little while. This revamp I've been doing for oh, about a year now. I don't know. The earlier videos are, are I'm kind of awkward. I mean, I'm probably still kind of awkward because I'm just an awkward person, but I just think it's fun when people watch the older ones and that's how they meet me. That's how they find who I am. 
So um, thank you for your comment. And um, the square blanket I think you're referring to in that video is the um, Cozy Memories blanket. And I believe this is by Kemper Ray. I will double check before I post a link. This was something that I had thought about frogging or making into a pillow cushion. Um, but then when I went back and rewatched that video to see what blanket you were referring to, I kind of really liked it. I do remember though, the process of knitting these mitered squares was not my favorite. So this is the blanket that I think you were referring to, and it is the Cozy Memories Blanket by Kemper Ray. Yeah, a lot of people have knit this blanket. It's nice to be able to use scraps that you have um, laying around or leftovers from other projects. Um, it's fingering weight. So I will, um, I'll post a link in the description box for you. And good luck. I think that would make a great gift for um, a baby. So. I do not use mohair. Um, as I said, I have a sensitivity to wool. And even as a child, I remember going shopping with my mom and falling in love with these sweaters that I would see. And then I would try them on and they would just itch. And I would look at the tag. Oh, it has wool. Oh, it has wool. And then I would see those fuzzy, beautiful mohair sweaters. And I would be like, oh, they look softer. So I bet I could wear them. And I just couldn't. So I don't use mohair. Um, I did not use mohair in my no frill sweater. Um, I probably will never use mohair, but I'm learning from watching other podcasters and um, following other people on Instagram that there are other things that you can use to get the same effect as mohair. So I may try some of those alternatives in the future, but mohair is not for me. So also, even though I do like the look of it sometimes, I feel like super fuzzy garments like that always it sticks to everything like you know if you're wearing lip gloss it sticks to your lips and then it's just in your mouth or it just it just leaves like a trail behind it you know in the chair that you're sitting in or I don't know it just kind of gets on the inside of your coat or your jacket so I'm not a huge fan of the fuzz I don't know if I'll ever hold something double with any kind of fuzzy material I'm trying to think what the other question was. This question, did I use magic loop for the muscle burrow hat? I did not. I used, um, uh, sorry, uh, Natalie from Love and Stitches, Nitty Natty, uh, recorded a tutorial on how to start the muscle burrow hat with a crochet hook. And I used that tutorial to start it. And then I continued knitting on circular needles, like shorter cord circular needles. And then um, I, in I think I increased the length of the cord once, but it was still circular. So I did not use Magic Loop. I'd I'm not a fan of Magic Loop. I always get um, a little bit of like a, not a hole, but you can see where you're like switching to the next needle when you have to push the stitches around, at least in my knitting. And I don't, I don't really care for having to shift the, the stitches on the needle that much. I don't like manipulating them like that. Um, it annoys me. And I feel like just aggravating, especially a more delicate yarn makes it more fuzzy and the potential to felt and just I don't know, messes with the integrity of the yarn. Maybe I, because I knit so tight, that's an issue for me because I'm really having to struggle to move the stitches. It's not like if you're a looser knitter, they just kind of slide. It's not like that for me. So it, I'm not a fan, I'm not a fan of Magic Loop. So no, I did not use Magic Loop, but I did use circular needles if that answers your question. But you know, I don't, I don't think it matters what you choose to use. You can use anything that you prefer and still have a great hat so you find what you like and use it i wanted to show you a book that i was gifted 
I was contacted by Penguin USA Random House Publishing Group to see if I would be interested in receiving the Knitting for Olive book that came out in English. And I said, yes, please, absolutely. I have not knit a pattern by Knitting for Olive. And I also have never used their yarn. So I was very interested in receiving the book because I do love her. Like I follow her on Instagram and I love everything I see on there. And this book, I believe there are 20 patterns in here. It talks about yarn sustainability. She talks about um, how their yarn is made. It talks about animal welfare. I mean, just all wonderful things. I mean, we were talking about mohair, but... I don't want to bend the book, but look at that. I mean, just simple classic patterns. I like those little balloon sleeves. I have to make that. There's several in here that, oh, this, I love this. So this reminds me of when I took ballet lessons. That would be so cozy over your leotard. So if you're a dancer, <laughs> I think that you need to make this sweater. Also, that would just be cute with leggings and like black leggings and just that and boots. That's cozy. It's cozy. I got to show it again. Sorry. There's just some beautiful, beautiful patterns in here. So now that it is available in English... It has been released, so you are free to purchase it. So thank you so much for sending me this book. I am really excited to start knitting some things from it. Um, probably we'll start after the holidays. But I'm thinking this will be something that I venture into as spring is starting to emerge so that I have them ready to wear next fall. So I think I'm going to do that. Coming up, I am going to do a video in two weeks, as I've said, and um, update you on the three whips that I'm working on now. I'm hoping that all three of them will be finished. We'll see. And then I am going to start posting a video weekly for the month of December. Um, the videos will come out on Sundays. I'm going to do Advent Sundays. I'm not doing Vlogmas. I'm not going to do daily vlogs. Um, they may not even be vlogs. They may be like check-ins like this where we just chat and you see different parts of my life here, um, baking, getting ready for the holidays, spending time with family. Um, but I will definitely have some sit down moments where we chat about knitting because I have an advent calendar coming. I'll want to chat about that and just different things. So after the next video, um, I will be here with you every week. So that will be fun. And uh, just a life update, you know, like I said, we're sick here. Everything's kind of coming together. I do things in my life based on what I feel, where I feel God is leading me. And different seasons of life call for different changes. You know, I, I felt called to bring my children home to homeschool them. We did that for three and a half years. Um, then my daughter, you know, needed to be back in school and she's thriving. I sent them both back. My son needed to be home. And so now I've brought him home. But before I did that, when they were both in school, if you've been here, I talked about how I picked up a second job because I thought that I would have more time. And it's something where I thought that it would, I was supposed to do it and it was close to home and the hours were flexible, but I learned very quickly that time is very important. And I know I've talked about that before here, but I'm not perfect. And I don't always remember the things that I tell myself or say, <laughs> and I thought, no, I can do it. You know, sometimes we have these grand ideas that we can do it all. And we can't. And very quickly, I learned even before my son came home, that when you're putting your energy into one thing, something else is going to suffer. And that was the home for me. And my home is my sanctuary. It's like my haven where I can come and be 
safe and comfortable and um, I can recharge, I can rest. And it was just chaos here because I wasn't here to maintain things. You know, the laundry was piling up. Um, you know, I tried to be a minimalist or live a, a minimalist lifestyle and things were piling up and it just was affecting my mental health. When my son came home to be homeschooled, that was another thing that was adding to, to that stress. And I said, I don't, I can't keep doing this. I am done working at the second job at the end of November, and I will be just part-time at my original workplace, and it'll be much better. And I will have more time to devote to him, more time to devote to my home, and I will have peace of mind and less stress. And I just have my time back because I need it. I need I need to be able to have slow mornings and I need to be able to deep dive into closets and organize and have everything have a home and not have things piled up because I think about them then all day. I didn't have time to finish the laundry and now it's piled up and I'm not, I work the next two days and I'm not going to be home to do it. And it's just going to pile up more because people are going to keep adding things. And it's not to say that my family doesn't help. They do. Um, you know, my daughter does her own laundry, but if you have kids, you know, the way that kids clean isn't always the way that mom cleans. So anyway, sharing all that with you to say <laughs> that I am going to have more time at home. So that probably means I have more to share with you guys, which is why I'm throwing around the idea of keeping that once a week video, because then I can just share my progress instead of just showing you a bunch of finished things. I can show you my progress more frequently. I don't know. We'll see how it goes, but that is my life update. And I hope you guys are all doing well. I'm going to get this cleaned up and I might, uh, you'll take a nap. <laughs> I hope you all are doing great and I will see you in a couple weeks. Bye.